uh, the podcast where we ask people what they're nerdy for. In this episode, I speak with Julie Maritek and Kristen Neal. We organized a comedy tour in North Carolina in 2019, and I thought uh, if we explored that, it would be helpful for uh, new comedians to see how you do that, how you go out and find venues and plan a tour. We also talk about women in comedy, and we talk about um, lesbian weddings and if Kristen and I are going to dress as cats and move in with Julia and her fiance, Brittany. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Nerdy Four, the podcast where we find out what people are nerdy for. I probably said that in the intro already. Anywho, how today is a special day because we're focusing on women in comedy, and I have brought in my good comedian friends, Kristen Neal and Julie Maritek, and we have have planned and executed a women's comedy tour across North Carolina in the past, and have been on a million shows together. And uh, welcome to the podcast, ladies. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so excited. Thanks for having us. I've, this is, I feel like we should talk about salty balls. Salty balls. I know I do too. <laughs> this is like like a public, SNL a skit. Public radio panel here. Okay. There are large salty balls. I want, okay, Julie, you talk about um, the, you start with our, our tour we planned, like the year and your impression of it. Well, it was 2019. And I remember that because I was actually in the hospital and you guys had to plan the first part of it while I was like slowly dying but then I came to life and then joined you guys on the tour and it was awesome so we were thinking okay we want to do a tour in North Carolina where do we want to go who do we want to make laugh and then I had you all do all the work up front and <laughs> we then- were dying I was dying. So we were like, we'll, we'll give you well, a Well, I guess we'll give time. her a pass. And then I recovered and uh, hopped on that train with you. Do you want to share what you were suffering from? Yeah. Well, I had a, um, I had like a stomach surgery and then I had all these complications from it. You and septic, right? Yeah, it was like, septic. and Scary stuff. Was, I was terrified. You looked gray in the face. I was I was a different color. It was, yeah, it was terrifying. Um, And then. I'm not even your mother. And then you got better. And then I saw the light and was like, Kristen and Amy. <laughs> Yeah, and then go. you got all better and went to Mexico and then COVID hit. And then COVID hit. And then we were terrified that you were going to be stuck in Mexico for the rest of your life. You or you were going to get COVID in Mexico. It was very scary times yeah. for us. And you and um, Brittany are just on the beach just like, this is This is great. We were at a phone party. And we were like, this is awesome. What's happening in America? I don't know. Mexico's fine. Brittany is your? Yeah, Brittany's my fiance. Yay, congratulations. Thank you. We're getting married in four months. Ooh. And you guys are coming. Yes. Mm-hmm. I had it on the date for the wrong year. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Dyslexia is fun. I had You're it like, on- wow, your wedding's in 2026. I thought that was pretty quick, too. I didn't know because you were so sick. I was like, maybe they have to get married fast because Julie keeps trying to die. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what I got sick again this year. Brittany just wants all your money, so she's like, can we hurry yeah. this up so I can get in that role? Yeah. I had a, yeah, she's like, I'm so tired of taking care of you. Please <laughs> either just die or be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here we are. Here we are. And then so you did all the marketing. You did like a beautiful images. What was the name of the tour? Uh, yeah, so I, I think I... I can't remember. I came up with the name, or we did it collectively, but it was called "That's What She Said." Yeah, and so I was like, "We should call it That's What She Said." We'll do a, um, a, a picture of it on the if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, I still have the posters up in my. It's art such room. a cute poster, and I had, you know, our pictures, and it was just so fun. It was one of the most fun weeks I've had, and a long time just being with you guys we would get together um just i'm trying to piece it together because some people are like how do you produce your own things yeah and they i'm like well you got like we met once a week i think for for lunch and we would get on our computers and reach out to different breweries and places where we would google to see if they had comedy or distilleries and off like do a nice beautiful email that I did not write so it was in my nice English <laughs> did you spell check them all like I remember you mm-hmm. being like being on top of that well first we chose our cities and we also chose those cities in North Carolina because of where you all had friends I have no mm. friends there but oh I did have friends come that's right they came in Wilmington but so we chose the cities based on who we knew would be there, we knew we could get there, and then we just looked at the city and we really just cold emailed tons of breweries, um, vineyards, yeah. whatever. I started yeah. doing it on Facebook Lightning Bolt. What's that called? Messenger. Messenger. <laughs> 
and um, don't. <laughs> Amy, oh my god, that didn't even like register me. I just like immediately I know. corrected I was like, her. Lady, I know. I didn't. Even I was know just you're like messenger. About. I just always like to fill in for Amy. It's you speak Amy <laughs> fluently now. Yes. Oh, um, so um, yeah. I'm sorry. And don't do that. Don't reach out cold, cold messaging places because they will get upset on Facebook because people don't want that. They, I think even like Facebook gets upset at you. They're like, you're not allowed to reach out to any new people who aren't your friends. Like, Oh, why? Really? I think because it's spamming. If, if at least if, it was like, if you're reaching out to a lot of people that you don't have like connections with and you're just kind of, even especially if you're copying and pasting or doing that, you get flagged as a spammer because I've, I've had to deal with that for like sending out like casting calls and stuff for people. Yeah. So, Interesting. So how do you avoid that? Do you I, have to like custom I, each? Customize you kind of customize, wait, do it in batches where you're like, I'll send like 10 right now and then I'll wait an hour later and do it. Uh, or sometimes just like physically, t- it's dumb. It's, I mean, it's, it is good because it's supposed to protect from spamming, but also mm-hmm. then, you know, there's still a bunch it's of hard terrible. hard networking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There, I um, started doing this thing where I ask my friends who live in a city, do you have a favorite cafe Brewery, distillery, bar, you know the owner. Can I reach out to that mm-hmm. person? And or um, DMing on Instagram, that's usually a young person answering that. <laughs> like, I do comedy. Um, do you guys ever have comedy there? Is usually how I start it. And then they can see in my Instagram that I actually do comedy and there's some clips on that's there. That's true. And also, it's nice when you do Messenger, Instagram Messenger, because you can see if they see it. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have an idea. Because sometimes they'll just go unanswered. And you're like, okay, no one's actually mailing no this died. account. But you send an yeah. email. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like just out there. Yeah. And then you have to wait around. But also email might not be getting as many messages as they get on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. So. I would say in comedy. Or you could call them, which is very scary. No, but scary. Oh, my gosh. Because the, the hostess like answers it. Killer she is, you call. <laughs> you do it like, uh, the, she's like a 20-year-old hostess. Like, oh, my gosh, what? Um, no, <laughs> Roger's the one who runs it. 20-year-old's like, what's this phone? <laughs> he doesn't get to work till 4 p.m. And he's usually Can you hammered call back by the text? <laughs> I feel like most comics communicate via Facebook Messenger text and Instagram. Like it's I, been moving more towards Instagram Messenger. I'm, yeah. I actually use that more, I think. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Like it email, is. people don't really use that much anymore. But I do think it's important to kind of have your pitch, right? Like I think we, for the That's What She Said tour, we kind of came up with our pitch, right? Uh, Female-focused. Experience, female. experience um, producing shows. Right. Mm-hmm. Experience producing shows, female-focused comedy, um, and then we would invite a local comic to be on our show. Oh, which was yeah. so much fun. Because so much fun. now, if you look at those comics, we had Joy Wells, mm-hmm. amazing, still doing so good, headlining all the time. Julia Desmond, who just moved to New York City. Mm-hmm. Both of them, just like effortlessly funny. Mm-hmm. That was so much fun. Also, Catherine Blanford. Yes. Who yeah, is now our local, our local ATL star. Uh, I mean, it was so much fun. And then we had our friend Matt Milner in uh, Wilmington, who was also so funny. So, Lauren. Yeah. Lauren. Was oh, and a, then Lauren. Lauren, yeah. She was in uh, Raleigh. Yeah, Lauren Faber, who's also a star in her own right. So, I mean, it's just like everybody, there was no duds. Not no. that we anticipated that, but you never know. Mm-hmm. Something else we put in that email to the um, uh, venues is that we had friends in the city that we would be able to at least right. fill out a certain amount. And then they, if they would help us with the rest. Yeah, if you book a show... They want to feel like you can fill the seats. So I feel like, you know, doing what you can to say, we know people in this area, we can bring people to the show, um, you know, to make them feel like you want to make them feel like you're doing most of the work. <laughs> sometimes we would send emails and we get the email back and it would say, yes, it's um, $650 an hour. And we're yes. like, no, that's not what we're doing here. We're not doing an event. We want to work with you. That's the thing, too. It's like we want to work with you. We mm-hmm. want to bring people in so they'll buy your beer or whatever. We had one that was at a coffee shop. They had beer too, though, right? That was a good little place. I think place. they had beer, yeah. 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 So we'll want people to come and patron your place, but also we'll put on the show. So it's like so a... Don't charge us. Yeah. It's like... we are. Well, that means we will lose money making this show happen. But we had that great brewery, which was... Oh, yeah. The brewery was awesome. Raleigh. I don't remember which one. No, Raleigh was the one with that was... Um, it was a great place, great space, oh, but it Charlotte. was... It was Charlotte, yeah. yes. Yeah. Where they were just like, yeah, we got this new annex. You guys can just come use it. And we walked in and we were like, oh my god, this is beautiful. beautiful. Like a greenery wall. It was so pretty. And um, and I'll we put pictures sold tickets of the, for each one, right? Yeah, we sold tickets. And mm-hmm. most of them, I think the Asheville show 
was the lowest turnout, but it was still a great show. And then the other shows were, um, I mean, really. Packed. I want to talk about what makes a good a good venue, like space wise. Well, having space, I think. <laughs> having alcohol. Alcohol. Alcohol space, for sale. AV. Um, like, do you need to bring mm-hmm. your own AV equipment or do they already have their AV equipment? That's always a really important we question. Yeah. That, that's another thing, too. It's like, luckily, Amy had a great setup. Mm-hmm. So we were able to take that with us, which is something you might need, especially if you want to try to yeah. go on the road. And sometimes you have to bring your, your own lighting. Shows. I brought lighting, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm such a nerd. Okay. Um, but I also feel like if – so this is what I find. And we're not having enough laughs yet in the beginning of this podcast because this is – We're very serious it's comics. making me sweat because this is what I do all day long is try to figure out a good venue to do a show in and like all these cold emails. Or, but um, to have like a space where there's a bar, an active bar, people buying drinks mm-hmm. is not a good space for your comedy show. Because the loudness of the people talking around the bar and ordering mm-hmm. their drinks makes it very distracting for people to concentrate on the spoken word. It's great for a band. People don't need to follow every word to hear a punchline in a song. It's great for bingo. Well, no, it's not great for bingo. You I mean, have that's to pretty, pay attention. That's pretty specific, though. I mean, I don't know if that would be a deal breaker or anything. That would be, it'd be the, nice the ba- to not bu- have that. Because a lot of the places, we did have a separate room. So in Raleigh, there was a separate room where the tanks were, whatever those are called. Mm-hmm. And then even in Charlotte, like we had with that annex that was brand new and it was separate. You had to go out to – Yeah. To, which is good, which is what you would want. I don't uh, – I mean, I feel like the thing about being a comic that makes comedy both frustrating and exciting is that you always have to pivot, right? I mean, it's hard to find the perfect venue, right, in all caps. It's like you might have a room that – I mean, Chris and I have done comedy on a loading dock mm-hmm. outside of a brewery. I mean, you kind of – that's the funny thing about being a comic is like – You'll do comedy anywhere. I did comedy right after an HOA meeting during a kid's pool party. <laughs> like, I'll do it in a bathroom. Like, just give me a microphone. I'll do a set. Yeah, where's the weirdest place you've done one? <laughs> that was mine. Okay, was it? After the HOA meeting. Yes. And then they all kind of, like, got their little chairs together. And then there was a kid's pool party going on right behind them. And there was, like, fifth graders sitting in the front row. Oh, my like, God. And you think, like, <laughs> I, I'm good with kids. And so I always think, like, oh, this will be fun. They won't talk to you. They're not good at crowd work. They're no fun. The children are scared of you. (laughs) Yeah, they're scared of me. Oh, my God. Work with me, kid. Work with me. Was this indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Okay. Because I did a show. I did a show next to a a pool deck adjacent in a pavilion for um, a bunch of parents that were uh, uh, parents of the the swimmers. Mm -hmm. And it like thundered, poured rain down all around us during my set. But we had a great time. It felt like a memorable. Yeah. 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 I mean, sometimes the weirdest places you do comedy ends up being the most fun. I mean, I used to run a show in a cat cafe. Yeah, that was and so fun. honestly, out of all the shows I've run, that's still my favorite. Oh, like Cats you, and you Laughs. You can't beat that I mean, unique. Yeah, the unique. It was in yeah. a cat cafe, um, which lots of jokes about me being a lesbian doing a show at a cat cafe. I love my pussies. hey hey Yeah, you do. But, you know, it's just like wherever you can do it, you just – make the most of it but i do think that when you go on tour i think it's all about the vibes right and like if someone's willing to open up their space for you and give you a shot then you know i think you just kind of make make the most of it i completely disagree with all of that (laughs) what vibes what no we need rules we need organization yeah that's what people love in comedy is Rigid, like rigid, strict rules, oh, strict rules <laughs> rigid schedules. I need a contract. Yeah. I need lighting. Amy needs a green room with uh, only red yeah. M and M's. I was about to say you could go around slapping people like, with the ruler, you, but there would be people. Like, that do you are have a writer? That, but not for or, are you have a writer? You're like, I need the room to be 67 degrees. No, I agree with Julie. I think that's part of the fun of it. Is it's not fun at the time, maybe, especially like we had a show at a. <laughs> defunct place called city tap which we like danced on their grave when they shut down but we, we tried it downstairs in a corner with um their um, yeah their av their, yeah AV. and then we tried it upstairs and it was frustrating at the time but i look back and i was like that was a good times and again looking back we, we had on their blair erskine yeah we had just amazing like, people on yeah. there and i think it's also just a learning experience but i am specifically also speaking to touring right like you're not in that city. So it's hard to know exactly what that place is like. Right. You don't live there. I think we lucked out that all of those venues were fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was great. I My favorite place we performed uh, is that sex store. 
Oh, that was oh, so fun. Yes. Yeah. 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 What was, was it called? So I don't know. Oh, I just I don't remember, remember there were like the, the sex wedge wedges. Yes, and they were, Amanda. Like, and then our, instead of getting paid, we got um, vibrators and dildos. Yes. As yeah, and then in between, fun. they would do, like, would show you how some other I stuff got works. I got hog tied. Yeah. You got hog tied in a sex shop. I got hog tied. Nice. Brittany, no? She was there. <laughs> Is that when she fell in love with you? <laughs> yeah, she's like, that's who I'm going to marry. <laughs> yeah, that's how they met, actually. She hog tied her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you're okay. ready to work on a farm. Well, I'm ready to work on a farm. Just hog tie me, throw me dollar bills at me. Yeah, I don't like think that. that's a farm. I think it's a different thing. But also, you know. <laughs> the bunny also, ranch. Also, it's a form of entertainment. Whatever. And it's one of the oldest professions there is. So. This is true. Whatever floats your boat. That, yeah, yeah. I got hog tied at that show. It doesn't happen often. I So I always felt a little giggly the whole time because I'm suppressed. And <laughs> well, I mean, but it's also it is you do feel a little more on edge and you're walking around and looking at all these sex toys. So you're you're feeling a little out of place, but also it's exciting. And then mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that was really interesting. I don't know what happened to that show. I think I don't know if the I think the person who was organizing it at that store um, broke up with um, like she worked there and she was like dating the owner's son or something like that. And then they broke up and then now they're not having the show anymore. I felt when I walked around the sex store, um, you know how we were like, have you ever like gotten um, some natural eggs from chickens and like there's like a real big egg and you're like, oh, that looked like it hurt. (laughs) I feel bad for the hen. I felt that way walking around the sex store. Like that doesn't go in anything. You can work up to it. Get get them in all sizes. And then you oh can just my like, God. do I have to? No, you I don't, don't have to. Don't do have I have to. to do reps with my hoo ha and with my other, abs? <laughs> other hoo ha's are different, you know. You're there, right. Lots other, of hoo ha's are different. Yeah, there's and there's other holes that people also enjoy things in that you know. It's all about personal preference. And yeah, me being a resident lesbian, I mean, you're the king of your. I'm the king of things in my bedside drawer. You yeah. know, you never know what I'm going to pull out. Have you ever gotten in trouble um, on a? going on the airplane with too many batons. We, we still haven't traveled with anything because we're, we're just too afraid they're going to like oh. pull out yeah. a giant. Can I tell a story? And you're like, this is the bomb. And you're just like, no, no, okay. No, that's my <laughs> BBD. If, well, because if, they have a kind of weapon that like people used to hit, like sticks, like bobbies in the police department in Europe. And right. so you, it can be considered a weapon, I guess. And you're, <laughs> oh, I guess if it's big enough, yeah. Um. I haven't used it. Hey, I was um, it, I was in a Caribbean place, and they don't have really good security there. And they were going through everyone's luggage, and the person in front of me, this husband and a wife, this guy was going through their luggage, just every nook and cranny. And then he found like a koozie for you know holding a drink inside of a koozie, inside of a koozie, inside of that a little vibrator. He pulled they it. Hit it. Well, she did. She was like just packing her stuff and her like her little my little no no goes in the mm -mm. and then this guy with his hands touched all of her stuff and I my heart ached. I'm like, it's okay. I got one too in my bag, lady. I feel you. I I just wanted to like hug her with my energy. You should have done like a Spartacus moment and held up your vibrator. Everybody held up their vibrator. And then we stood on our desks and my captain in unity. And, Dead like, Poet and, that, Society. and that's why I'm on the no fly list now. <laughs> and then one time I was walking in the airport with my luggage and I was pulling it and I was you like, why? Over a dildo. <laughs> why is this airport vibrating? This airport. <laughs> <laughs> is there like a big factory nearby? And I, it was my suitcase. My suitcase, the thing in my suitcase got activated somehow. Is your husband like, is Kenton just cool with you just traveling with lots of vibrators? And Oh, sure. All the time? He's chill. Yeah, he's he's a man of the people. He's a connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> he's salt of the earth. He is. He's he's he he says whatever Amy wants, Amy gets. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nice. No, that would be terrible because we would have too many dogs. <laughs> We'd be drowning in dogs right now. I'm okay. getting unsolicited marriage advice. Um, do you does your fiance say any whatever whatever baby wants baby gets? Oh uh, no! To you? Oh my gosh! Have you seen their house? Like, <laughs> there's definitely like a this is Britney style. This is Julie style. Yeah. And I mean, I think you guys do really well on like splitting it. We and you do sometimes have a lot of the same style, but it is like you can tell like yeah, Brittany we aesthetically wants merge, but Britney is much more how do I say delicately? She's She's, I mean, she's like the boss, you know, like she gets, um, 
if we put something in the house that she doesn't love, she's like, she'll say like, I love it because you love it, you know? Mm. Oh. Which she has. We actually just moved my grandmother's grandfather clock into our house. <laughs> Your grandmother's grandfather clock. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of grands in there. It can't be a grandmother clock. It's just a grandfather clock. It's very patriarchal. But, um... And she was like, what would love- be a grandmother's clock? Like the thing that dings and It'd the cookies like, are done? Yeah. It was on knit. the oven, that old timey one. It would knit for you and make racist remarks. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, before we go too far, I wanted to do talk about like the pitfalls in planning yeah. a tour because we did a lot oh, of mistakes. Did, we made a big mistake. Uh, we reached out to a comedy room and booked with them without uh, first seeing if there was a booker already using that room. And but we also, let's on make it clear, we were very naive, very new to comedy. Yes. None of it was done, like, we didn't, weren't trying to be callous. We really just didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, so, yeah, we stepped on some toes. It was very embarrassing for us. I, I felt Eventually, terrible. Because, but we didn't realize anything was wrong until... A year later, maybe? Yeah, I don't even remember what went down, because I don't think I was part of it when you guys initially reached out to that booker, but you basically reached out to the booker, and then they were like, I will never book you. Well, no, no, the booker, we reached out to the booker who ran a show at that room, but they said we would have to hire them as a producer. And so I honestly 100% thought like, oh, well, we don't need a producer. We're like, we're just, you know, we're brand new. That sounds so fancy. You know, I don't think they would want to produce us. That's really how I thought. That's what's so hard about, especially dealing with people through email and Mm -hmm. texts and stuff is like, you don't understand. Like we didn't do that because we thought, oh, we can do it without you. I really thought like, oh, well that sounds too fancy. We don't need that. Mm -hmm. We don't need to waste their time is what I thought. And then looking back now, it's like, obviously like, oh, well, of course. Yes. Make sure you, Google who runs comedy shows, maybe even reach out to them first and see if they want to work with you. And then uh, ask them if it's OK to reach out to the venue, I would say, if you're going to do that to, to so you don't step on any toes because comedy is a small world and it's good to be uh, doing it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because everyone is trying to do their own thing and. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of annoying egos uh, that you have to deal with. Like I understand, like y'all just it was a simple mistake, but they should never they should be like, well, I'm never going to book you again because that's but I mean that's my own personal the preference. The reaction was extreme. Yeah, because like I said, I've I've spent years producing shows and booking stuff and ran an indie room, and if somebody did that, I'd be like, oh yeah, y'all just didn't understand. But there's it's a weird ego thing with uh, a lot of bookers sometimes mm-hmm. too. But also, yeah, like I said, it's your first tour. You're going to make some mistakes. Like you don't know what you're doing. I want to talk about Raleigh now. Um, so we had this big space. Um, oh, Raleigh. It was hard to hear the laughs, I would say, when we were, because they, it was it like was huge. Huge. And it was a first, this was before the pandemic, before we had like, done shows outside and knew that like you could see people laughing, but if you That's can't hear so them. That's so true. You don't, like, yeah. So the laughs went into the sky. We all thought, well, I don't know how you felt. You and I felt like we had terrible sets. Well, okay. So I did my <laughs> set. I got off stage and went to the bathroom and cried. And then I, knowing that I cannot do marijuana, I took a gummy. <laughs> no, and I was like, this will make me feel better. <laughs> and I came back out, and then the room started like sliding. Yeah, and I saw your eyes slowly start to glaze over. <laughs> and then I felt so bad because Julie kept, because Julie felt the same way. And she said that this, I still remember this like so well because you said, I was looking for you like a ship at sea and you weren't there. You were gone. Yeah. You were my lifeline when I was felt like I was bombing and I was like, where's Chris? But I was in the bathroom crying, <laughs> which I don't know if that's any better or worse. And then, yeah, so then I decided to take a gummy. So then I made it through probably, you were hosting, right, Amy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then I don't remember Lauren Faber set, which I hate because I was literally holding on to the <laughs> table because like, it was okay? sliding away from me. You're like, I'm so high. <laughs> it was awful. Then I think... We all remember what happened after that. <laughs> so we started well, driving. We also hadn't really eaten. And well, so, we had, no, we had to eat pizza cones because well, no, we got it available. then. Yeah, well, we I had was pizza like, in I was a like, cone. We got to eat, and there was a food truck outside. Weird, weird pizzas and in we a cone. We got a pizza and a cone. So gross. So you can imagine it's the crust of a pizza rolled up and then stuffed with the ul- ultimate in processed food. I don't know. He made them there at least because they oh, took forever. Oh, he defrosted them there. Did he? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then we're driving. We're 
we were driving through the night to um, Wilmington, Wilmington that night. Yes. And you, we had, you're like, I don't feel good. And we pull over <laughs> and poor Kristen has to be sick on the side of the road. <laughs> and, well, as Julie said, I, I think it was like projectile. She projectile vomited that pizza in a cone all <laughs> over the highway. And I was like holding back your hair and I was like, it's okay. It's okay. And then you were like, I'm so high. Well, Amy thought I was had food poisoning. Amy, yeah, so she was like, out. Amy's like, don't don't touch the pizza in the cone. No, she gets out and she's like, Was it the pizza in a cone? I thought we were all gonna be sick. I thought we were all gonna be throwing up, but no, it was the marijuana inside of you. And then I am such a mom, I had a I had clean trash bags yeah. in my car. Yes, thank goodness because I got my suede boots. Because your suede boots are they okay now? Yeah. But my favorite I still thing, wear them, they make they make me laugh. You came back in the car, my favorite thing you've said ever. Can you please say it? I said, I don't know how things work. <laughs> and Amy said, it's okay. <laughs> and then I fell asleep in the car you and I woke asleep. up at the beach, yeah. Yeah. which was the best. Passed. And you then I, I really, I, 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 cause I know I can't do gummies. Even when you have a bad set, don't go to the gummies. Just cry in the stall. And then yeah. get back when you're out. And then what happened when we got the, oh, got the tapes? The tapes caught the laughter. Yeah. Right. And, and then we were like, oh, it was, oh it was actually a good show. It was actually a good show. I don't know. When you're three women doing a tour, inevitably there's lots oh. of crying. I was. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. That's you what it cried. was. Yes, because everybody cried. I cried because I forgot I had that joke. I was doing for a little while because I said, "Oh, I bet, I bet you thought that." Like, yeah. Everybody cried and like someone was on their period and, and then something else. Right. And I was like, "Yeah, that's yeah, pretty much what it was." That's pretty much how we had pillow fights. <laughs> <laughs> Naked pillow fights. Um, yeah, we all had some period where we cried. Yeah. But um, I will say it was really fun. There's something about traveling with people and, like, you want to feel safe with people you travel with. I don't know how to describe it. But I feel like, you know, it was really fun traveling with you guys. I felt so – that was also my first time leaving home after I'd been really sick. And so I think I had a lot of anxiety about just, like, not being home, not being with Brittany. And it was, like – a, I was traveling with my friends, and B, I was traveling with two moms. So you guys were like, <laughs> we, did, we tucked you in at night. Yeah, you, you tucked me in at night. You took care of me. You were like, what do you need? You had, yeah, you had like your little trash bags. You had like snacks, <laughs> gummies, yeah. gummies. It was really cute. a lot of stuff in Kristen's purse. <laughs> Kristen and I, I mean, I, I'm sure you have too. I mean, we have traveled with people to do you shows lost your where hat. it's not, it's not as fun. I lost my hat. Oh yeah, find your hat. You find my hat. It was an adventure. <laughs> But it's fun to do a tour with people that you love. Like so, sometimes you can travel with people that it's not so much fun to yeah. travel and do. do That's shows really with. important, mm-hmm. and then you can realize that too late, and you're like, okay, now we're doing this. We're, yeah. Now I'm stuck in this city with this person. But I will say that Julie and Amy are two people that I never get tired of, and oh. I figured it out. Like this sounds like a very Amy thing, but I feel like um, I I noticed people who suck my energy mm. that they just take 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 take, and I feel like with you guys, it's just like it's you give back energy to me, you know? And it's just like constant and it's just, it feels so good. Aww. So I know that I can Aww. always travel with you guys or be with you guys forever. Let's go. Let's all move together. Let's okay. Move in together. Can we move in with you and Brittany? I'll ask Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> I think she'd totally be down for what it. What if we dress like cats? Only if you dress, <laughs> only if you have a very strong mid-century aesthetic. Um, yeah. I'm down. Let's I'll just use start, a litter box. Let's, <laughs> let's just start. A harem. I'm you gonna need gonna a lot of my, gummies. All my women. <laughs> I'm gonna need a lot of gummies if I'm gonna become a cat and a lesbian in the same day. <laughs> well, it's like we said, you build up to it. You can. You well, I didn't know we to... all had to have sex together. I thought I we don't could know. I'll live together. <laughs> no, what we're all modern means in this context. Sex together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, I also want to talk about we um, recorded all of our sets, so it was like a Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, mm-hmm. and then we drove home on Sunday, mm-hmm. um, and we recorded all of our sets. Did you guys watch all of your sets? Did you see any difference doing your material all those nights in a row? I don't think I watched them that closely. Um, I think it was definitely different, especially at that last show in Wilmington, because it was like an intimate space, mm-hmm. and I felt I remember feeling very comfortable there mm-hmm. because it was very warm. And the host was great, and I'd, I had friends there. Um, so I definitely felt – so you can see, like, that's what kind of, like, the goal of comedy is, is to go on tour, which, you know, unfortunately, that's not something that we can necessarily do right now in our lives. But you see, like, going to different cities, different venues, doing it regularly, that's how you get really good. I loved 
do my set on the last night was my favorite set because I had spent all that time before. Oh, people like don't editing jokes, yeah, yeah. moving them around in my sets, trying different like opening things. I I love doing multiple and then also i'm the most com- like confident by the fourth mm-hmm. the fourth day yeah mm-hmm. so you can see like well, if you were on the road for like four or five weeks can you oh. imagine how much better you'd be yeah by the end it was so also because cool. your parents were there so like i remember just oh make, i remember making your dad laugh and, you know, <laughs> it was just like it was really fun it was fun to like we drove we saw my alma mater you guys saw yeah. where i went to college i met your parents like it was just you know it was like just really warm and it was just a really sweet experience it's so much more than comedy did you make any money yes did how much we? i don't remember we did i know because um julie and i had done a show a halloween show that we were in the hole for and i was actually keeping up with it and we were in the hole like 250 dollars mm-hmm. because um, they made you pay for the space yeah yeah which i don't regret it was a great show but i'm but i remember figuring out how much money we made and we, we got out of that hole and i think we made a little bit of money mm-hmm. so it was worth it. But I also don't think I really put in like what we spent on food and housing. And, yeah. Right. So we're just talking about. Well, um, we stayed at your friend's place in Asheville and then we stayed at your house in Wilmington. So, I mean, we, we kind of lucked out in terms of. Oh, my God. We did that. Um, the deal with staying in a hotel and right, then you, oh, both of your pictures. computers got corrupted by the oh software. My God, yes. Oh, my yeah. <laughs> That's my old laptop. And sometimes I still have to open it up to get things. And it's still search fine. <laughs> <laughs> what was yeah. that called? I had to like get an entire new computer. Yeah, that was insane. <laughs> it was not. I'd rather just pay for the hotel than it ever. Still do has <laughs> control over my old laptop. Oh my gosh! It was something that was like oh, another comic sent to you for getting cheap hotel rooms, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was like at some. Oh, and we had a post on the internet about how much yeah. we liked our hotel room. Yeah, <laughs> do you remember? Wait, did it hack you and then made you post that? No, it was like, or you, had, exchange, you had to. Exchange for a cheap rate. You what, had was to that? what was that? What was that? Did you go to the old company where that guy used to do that, where he would like set you up in hotels and you just have to like do reviews? and? Yeah, and, like, and that was legit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the problem was, I think Julie and I both clicked on like some Link. Like spam thing. And it like corrupted our computers. You down, You both downloaded the yes, porn because virus. We're both it down. took over but, our lives. Yeah, 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 <laughs> How yeah. much was the room though? It was like a $35 hotel room, right? <laughs> it was a nice room. I think we stayed there again when we went back. Yeah, I until I just we... spent like another $2,000 later to get a new computer. No yeah. deal. Yes, because we did stay in that hotel last time we went to Charlotte with Nate, remember? Yes. Because then when we went there, there was a driver guy who was so nice. He was like, I'll take you guys, you know, to the grocery store or whatever. And we're like, okay. Yeah. And then we went back and we were like, can we get a shuttle somewhere? And they were so rude. And we were like, this yeah, it's like an airport. Terrible. It was the airport Marriott or something that we were staying yeah, at. Yeah. Like just, a courtyard. Yeah. I drove by it recently because we drove to Charlotte to fly out to go to Turks and Caicos. And I saw it. And I was like, yeah, that's the hotel. <laughs> Aw. That was so fun. When are we doing another tour? I know. Doesn't it make you want to plan another tour? It does. With you guys, especially. Um, I can't believe that was 2019. I really thought it was like 2018 or, or earlier. It was four years So, like, ago. we got it done. It was in November, too, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, it was in November, and then, Do yeah, you, and then March was COVID, so it was like... Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Do you guys... Okay, you guys did... You ran the marketing. How did we sell tickets? Did we do ads on Instagram, Facebook? Did we do Google ads that followed people? We did do Google ads. Did we do radio? No, we didn't do radio. We did... Um, I do we see did, comics doing radio, We did Facebook ads. We did a lot of Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Um, do those even work anymore? Emails... I think they, I see things on I there. Think and I think they help. I yeah. think we should get a but picture. But also, Julie and I download anything that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's this porn virus that I'm going to click on? Should we get a picture of us at um, that sex shop and have that be the ad? Maybe that would get some clicks. <laughs> Amy with a dildo. Where's this go? For most most ads like that, though, you got you got to get really really niche and targeted, especially for like live shows yeah. in local towns. You really got to like narrow it down. Uh, like Joe, I remember talking to Joe Pettis, who produces a lot of shows in Atlanta. Like most of his work is just spent learning when algorithms change and what ads and stuff you do. But that's what the thing. And then for radio, buying radio ad isn't really great anymore because radio's dying. But if you can get on more like radio talk shows, like local shows, like the day of your show, that's what you want to try to do. So for the next time you do a tour, 
figure out what stations actually have local stations and yeah. email them a press kit and say, hey, we're going to be doing this show. Could we come on and plug our show like the morning of? It's a bit more travel because you got to get some places really early. But that's a lot of times where you can get some just random like, you know, uh, like in town folks that come out. That's more beneficial than trying to buy radio ads. That's yeah, seems, that seems wild to me, though, because I just. I hate morning radio, and I just can't imagine listening to it. Welcome to the yeah. radio. <laughs> what about but, like XM but it also stations? Seems really fun. What about like XM? I used to do radio. I used to work for the High Museum of Art, and I would do radio and TV shows all the time. Would you be on there? Yeah, I would With- promote uh, mm-hmm. exhibits, and I would travel all throughout the southeast, and I would be on radio talk shows. I'd be on morning shows. Well, we you know what you got to do is probably get on podcast ads. Yeah. Podcast, yeah. yeah. But those are well, like, and t- TikTok. You know? TikTok wasn't even really popular in 2019, but now I feel like TikTok. Mm-hmm. Every comic has a TikTok. Yeah, TikTok's the best. Can you, I heard you can buy ads on TikTok. You can buy ads on TikTok. Yeah. And also that you can make them targeted too. But yeah, I mean, that's just what, especially too, you've done a tour now. So you have enough photos, you have, cl- and you filmed all your sets. Oh, yeah. So you could put together a little promo, you could put mm-hmm. together a press kit, and then you send that. Uh, you just need to know a producer or editor that can do things like that. I don't know if there's one in this room that has that experience. <laughs> yeah. mm, who who that knows? Be? Well, uh, I also, I just have to, you know, toot our horns because like, I had been in comedy two years. You guys have been maybe two and a half. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, and I thought, think we were pretty established at that point. I mean, we had festivals. I mean, mm-hmm. Amy had already been on, you know, we could list, she'd been on Laughing School Best Of, and she'd been in these festivals. I don't even think I'd have been in any festivals for sure. But um, now I feel like we've accomplished so much more. Mm-hmm. It's been so, yeah, so it's long pretty ballsy Even that over, we did all that. I love yeah. that. But I feel like that's what you do, especially as women. I mean, if you want something done, just do it. Like, don't sit around mm-hmm. and wait for someone to ask you to be on their show. Start your own show. You know, don't sit around and wait to be asked to go on tour. Do your own tour, you know? And I feel like that's part of comedy, especially as women, is just doing it yourself, you know? And it's sort of a little bit like fake it till you make it, you know? I think well, we definitely were doing that. I think mm-hmm. we did get the really stage well, time. I, th- I think that's a perfect, like, when you're starting out, that's the perfect opportunity to go meet, do shows where your friends are while you like are getting the stage time, getting the confidence, seeing what jokes work, seeing what doesn't, and then get good and then try to go be in the real clubs and all the other stuff. Because uh, you just need stage, you need so much stage time. Yeah. Ah! It was successful, though. We it was. It was successful. We sold out almost every show. We had fun. We got to work on new material. Um, you know, we kind of set it up where, like, some of us, you know, we would split up um, the order. So, you know, mm-hmm. one of us may host, and then somebody may be the closer. And then the next night, you know, Amy may open, and I Kristen would be the closer. I think Amy opened most of the shows. Cause you had, you, had, had, you had so much material that time. The closer was our guest. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did five at the top to get everyone warmed up to take the bullet. But Matt Milner did that for us at the last venue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, nice. but kind of we kind of switched up, though, like, kind of. You know, or sometimes, sometimes I think I would even be like, I think I only have, like, 10 or 15 minutes of material. And then Kristen would be like, oh, that's cool. Like, I'll do 20 to, like, fill up your five minutes. You know, we all just kind of work yeah. together to fill up the hour. And then riding in the car afterwards, uh, we could talk about our jokes. And it was, um, a, like, a lab. I yeah. liked that. Yeah, and we listened to comedy podcasts. We did. Um, okay, let's, anything else you guys want to add about women in comedy? That was a really, I love how you said just do it yourself. Yeah. That's my two cents. Just do it yourself. Don't sit around and wait ooh, for people to ask you to be on their show or do a tour. You know, start your own show, start your own tour. You know, get a couple great friends like Kristen and Amy are my ride or die lifelong comedy friends and you know just build your community i changed my mind i will be a cat in your house <laughs> <laughs> you can be my pussy anytime Ayo. Ayo. i mean we, all, we are also very lucky that we that, i mean me personally that i found lace larrabee's laugh laugh yes laugh laugh because i wouldn't have i started writing before and i was going to go to an open mic i went to open mics and just sat there and watched and then i think i would have quit immediately if I would hadn't found other women in comedy at that time, because I'm very, I can be very weak and very sensitive, just like you know, we like we cry, all right, and um, <laughs> and so that really helped me is finding other women, and I found Amy pretty quickly because she was in level two, I think, when I was in level one, something like that, and so that was very helpful having that network. 
mm-hmm. but I think still men don't get it. I've heard um, guys say it's like it's not harder for women. Comedy's just hard. And I, you have to look at it. It's like, why are is 80% men? And they just think, I don't know what they think. Do they think that we that women just don't want to do it? Or we just, we all have kids and houses to take care of. So that's why we're not doing it. It's because it's hard. It's harder for women. But they don't look at it like that. I think a lot of men don't even think of the fact that it's harder for women. I okay this we're gonna get deep here I hope I'm not gonna cry um (laughs) there I've been trying to analyze uh when there's like multiple different genders and identities on a lineup who who's killing more uh and I'm trying to like okay if a, a different person said that same joke would it get a laugh and I'm trying trying to kind of like break it down and I feel like there are people who won't laugh at a woman who's saying the same similar kind of joke to what a man says and I'm just not comics in a room I feel like comedians are better at at laughing at at, regardless of gender I'm just like lay people regular people and I've just started noticing that and it's I'm sad about it so oh I I have this thing I hate to do, but I do it. I go on when I see a clip of a woman comic on Instagram, I look at the comments. And if it's not from their personal page, if like someone, if like Comedy Central posted or something, it's all negative. It's all negative. Even like someone like Tamar Rubin, who's a local comic here, so funny, does her own shows. I mean, she's, she started getting um, popular on Instagram and it's great, but then also you see all the negativity that she has to put up with. YouTube also, is a nightmare. Also, she's gorgeous. And I think that that like, makes people mad, especially men who yeah. can't see a beautiful, funny, confident woman. And so I do kind of want success like that. But then again, it's like, God, it's going to be it's I mean, it's so hard. hard. Even as a queer woman, I mean, most of the spaces that I do comedy in are mostly straight people. And so you know, am I like the resident lesbian that's up there telling my lesbian jokes? And how do my jokes... You know, sometimes they, you know, are received differently if the room is full of other LGBT folks or whether it's, you know, straight people. I mean, you know, you could take micro identities, right? Like what it is, what is it like to tell comedy as a woman and then a queer woman and then a queer woman of color, right? I mean, Mm, you just keep going, you know, the more niche you get, the harder it gets. Yes. Uh, it, uh, the com like the comments. So YouTube is the worst for people negging. Is that what it's called? Trolling. Just being pieces of shit. Oh yeah. yeah just and like, I've oh and the, the, their favorite comment is this is funny and it's like you know it's yeah. supposed to be funny. If you don't so, think it's funny, then that is fine. And probably you do, but you won't admit it. I I just can't imagine being the type of person who would go on there and just be mean. You know. So I, I wait. I oh. so I. When it first started posting, I would start. I would just respond to it. Oh yeah, and I would go to their site, their YouTube page, and then, I mean, like it's like a lot of teenage boys, and there's yeah. a lot of Minecraft videos they're posting. And so I'd be like, my son says your Minecraft is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna get pegged as a troller. I gotta be careful how how deep I go. The, the only funny thing, not funny, like but like the only funny thing about people doing that is that whenever they post shitty negative comments, it actually still builds up your engagement. That's so true. Because yes. like algorithms don't really give a shit what people are saying. They just care that there is engagement so like weirdly and it's not great i mean i'll say this men fucking suck and it's dumb that they all like the majority of them want to be toxic like i loved what y'all are talking about like that you were supportive of each other on tour like i work with a great people now but like i've worked with people before where like it was like pulling teeth to get us to admit that we did anything successful or we were proud of what we were doing and we also had sold out shows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, hey, we're doing a good job. They're like, if we if, if we say that, we'll die. We gotta, like, sharks don't go backwards. Just weird fucking yeah. toxic Yeah, and like, how many bullshit. times do I hear the same dudes doing the same dick yeah. jokes, you know? Yeah. And then women get up there and write really fresh new material because, you know, I feel like women have to work harder to mm-hmm. make people think they're funny you know whereas a dude just gets up there and he's like i just started this yesterday i think i'm funny (laughs) okay and then but let's also say that there are a lot of amazing male comments yeah yeah yeah. there was even like i was in the green room at uh laughing skull 
and there was some it was all dude comics back there with me but there was a like a new guy up there literally humping the stool and everyone all the guys in the back room were just like he's bringing us all down yeah you know? <laughs> i think atlanta actually has a lot of really supportive men oh yeah compared to other really cities. great really great it's, they're lovely i love the atlanta comedy scene i do too okay so um if you're cool it's cool with you guys we're gonna now do a bunch of questions i'm gonna find out how nerdy you two are Oh. This is alert nerdy. I'm glad you all watched any of the episodes before this to know that this happens. Cool. Great friends. Love you guys. <laughs> Man, that mom is just really coming at you. That's the double sided edge of the, I've been the mom busy. board. No, I try not to die. Yeah, uh, yeah me too. <laughs> I play well, you, roller derby. You're doing roller derby now, which is so hot. And, and someone, dangerous. someone broke their leg last practice. So. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, there's well, a- you missed out on a great bachelorette trip, Amy. So. Oh, yeah. that's you. Man. You go to Mexico. It was, you know what it was like? It was like your pool parties, but then you don't have to go home. Oh, we can do that here when Kenton goes out of town. <laughs> okay. So we're going to find out how nerdy you guys are. Um, have you ever been to a Rush concert? No. No. Okay. Uh, do you ever have you ever had a card collection? Baseball p- postcards, Pokemon. Yes, car baseball cards. No, I'm a lesbian, of course. I've had sticker collections. Oh, I'm gonna add that sticker. Okay. Um, have you ever owned or held a pet tropical bird? I think I've held a bird at some point, like probably on some vacation. Did you have a cat in the other hand? Did you feed the bird to the cat? <laughs> My uncle had a bird named Woodstock. Was he a, a normal guy? Did he have a ponytail? I'm seeing a ponytail, but bald up front. Hmm, I could definitely see him rocking that, but no. Okay. Is it an uncle? Yes. Did he have a van? No. <laughs> did he put his bird in the van? <laughs> um, did, did, the, did the bird pick the ticks out of his ponytail? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, si- I'm painting a picture in my imagination. Um, do, any, do you guys have um, fairy wings? Yes. No. <laughs> How many times have you guys used AI since it came out? A lot of times. Oh yeah, on TikTok. The, you mean like? What do you mean like the the AI chat filters? Chat bot, that? Chat GBT. I don't know what that is. I use it a lot because I'm a copywriter. Ooh. That's like my, my part are of my you, job. Are you? Is it? Can, are you using it to write your your copy? Or are you checking it to see if it's? I I um use it to get ideas started. That's what it's supposed to be used for. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't like take it word for word yeah. but i've also and i've also used it to um plan some vacations yeah stuff like that i don't understand any it's of this. not supposed to like uh, it's it makes shitty art and it's steal like the art stealing stuff is not great but like it's supposed to make our lives easier yeah i'm a, a copywriter i did my that day job I, yeah i've so. been working for business plan stuff and i'll be like type give me this and then i just take that i'm like cool i'm gonna chunk this out I like yeah these it's a great for idea yeah. idea starters but i am obsessed with that the one ai that's on the search engine that fell in love with the guy and tried to get him to leave his wife. I don't know if you heard that. I didn't see that. <laughs> is this real or is this that movie? No, it's real. It's real? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Did the movie come first or the... What movie? Talking about, you're talking about uh, House. Not House. Uh, her. 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 Oh, no. That's different. Okay. That, <laughs> she left him because she realized that she's an AI and she can do whatever she and wants. And did she kill him and run out? No. There's oh, a... you're talking about different things. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Her these is a very sweet movie. Oh, there's this one where there's this like sexy robot lady and she gets the guy to fall in love. Oh, that's yeah, that's Machina. That's Machina. Yeah, 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 I didn't watch it, but my husband watches movies that are scary and he tells me what oh, happened. Oh, it's so good. Do a little act out. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a musical that you know all the words oh, fuck to? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to give that one to Kristen. <laughs> Hamilton? Oh, Hamilton, Moulin, Moulin Rouge, Rouge uh, Waitress. How many times have you seen Moulin Rouge now, love? Four. <laughs> in, not on the TV. <laughs> like, in real life. Yes. IRL. In multiple cities. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I got, I got, I got the, um, the tickets, the um, season tickets. So I'm very excited. Awesome. I went. I saw Moulin Rouge at the Fox. I'd never seen it before. I saw it this last this last run. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, Chris and I saw it not together, but we both saw it in New York. It was Ooh. amazing. I saw it. Uh, yeah, I had like second row seats. But oh, um, that's great. I'm dating. Uh, my, I've been dating a theater nerd for the last year and a half. So I've I've seen so many live shows. It's a lot of fun. It's very fun to be exposed to the world of it. It's, it's been great. my favorite thing in the whole world. Like so, we went to New York, Amy and I again. Me and Amy and Amanda, who are great travel companions. That was a long trip. That was four nights, wasn't it? Three nights? Yeah. We all slept in the same beds, too. That got a little... I mean, I had a great time, but that was a little long to be away. From your family? 
Yeah. I think oh. also because like on the road trip, you're moving and you're driving. and But in New York, you kind of had more downtime. You were like, I miss my family. But so. That's then, so cute. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> like I was. And he's like, what's that? A couple more days. Because oh. I was really bummed. I can get ignored any in any city. And <laughs> in my show. And I didn't make the finals. And I thought the people that got in the finals was bullshit. Um, not just me personally getting in. There was a ton of other comics who were I didn't feel more qualified. Anyway, I was just in a bad, bad mood. And so I bought myself a ticket to Moulin Rouge and got a giant wine. And it was the best yeah. night of my life. Self-care. Exactly. That's Did what I have- said to the guy. The guy asked me, do you want a big wine or a little wine? And I said, a big wine. It's self-care. And he was like, <laughs> you're right. The bartenders at the New York shows are so nice. They are. Mm-hmm. Um, did did we all cry on that trip too? Probably. Probably. I know I, I drank know, too I many did. margaritas. I was so sad I wasn't on that trip. But oh, I didn't well, I didn't try sick. out. sick. No, I know. I, I literally, <laughs> every time there's just some tour, you're like, you were just. <laughs> well, also, that was a lot of learning experiences. Mm-hmm. I didn't try out for that. Yeah, I think that was a strange. Okay. Have you read Ready Player One? Yes. Yes. Did you watch the movie? Yes. yes. Did you read Ready Player Two? No. I have the book, but I haven't read it yet. Same Z's. I am not, I wasn't a huge fan. Did oh, you read I it? I have to say. I be- liked it. Because the, wait, the book the or lead the movie, character. Oh, wait, one or two? What are, you, what are you talking about? The book. Ready Player One? Yes. You didn't like the book as much as the movie? I didn't like the book as much as I thought I would because I just felt like the dude was just like one of those guys who's like, you've never seen Back to the Future? Like, your life is shit. Like, that's how the whole book felt to me. Like, they, they didn't get the references, so that means that they weren't cool. That's how I felt. I but like anyway. that's all of boy Strong culture. opinions of it. I, I liked it. I thought it was really fun. I didn't I think it was, I didn't think it was really. like rocket science, but I thought it was like a fun read. I listened to it with my, my son when he was little. We had a good time listening to it. That's cute. I don't have children. <laughs> You have, you are the child. I am the I child. Do. Yeah. Do you know what your hat is right now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who wrote the Lord of the Rings? J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkien. Yes. Oh, you're such a nerd. Okay. Everyone knows oh, that. Oh, that's a low bar one. Oh, I wouldn't have gotten that. Have you, um, have you read them? I've seen all the movies and the Hobbit movies, but I've never read the books. I saw the movies at midnight, most of them. Mm-hmm. When they came out? Mm-hmm. That's pretty nerdy. Did, so you haven't read any of them? I wasn't a huge fan, though, but my best friend Chris was. Oh, so yeah, I saw, a good friend. Yeah. Um, they were very long. They were and very it long. Was midnight. I had to watch them with Kenton on, a, I think, probably a DVD, because uh, we had to pause so he could explain the story to me. Oh, I mean, I, I enjoy them. They're great. Did... Uh, go ahead. I was just saying, Brittany, actually, not too long ago, like, I think when I was recovering from being sick, we watched all of the Lord of the Rings and all of the Hobbits. We just sat there and like watched six movies, and they're all like three hours long. They're very long. And then, did you know that there's a, like a prequel, The Semmerillion? Have you heard of this? Mm-mm. Kenton's reading so. it right now. That's why I, this question made. It. I just look at my family and then make up these nerdy questions. Semmerillion's not. It's like a prequel, but also it fills in the gaps in the middle of it. Also has some stuff afterwards. Oh. It's just a lot of extra Thank side you. stories. Joel, there's a reason why I'm producing a podcast yes. called Nerdy Four. Did you read? Have you read it? I've never read Semmerillion. I read the Lord of the Rings books when I was a kid in The Hobbit. They're so the, thick. They're so they're hard so to get thick. through. They're really hot. And then shout out uh, the the old animated Hobbit movie from like. Oh those, God, it's one of my favorites. That was. That's oh yeah. Great. That's a great that's film. Fun. If you can go find that, it's from like 60s or 70s. That one's really. good. I watched that all the time as a kid. I did too. I never know. You want to? You see that Kindergarten Cop is on Netflix. Oh my God, I that love was my Kindergarten Cop. Movie. Really? Oh, the, I want to watch that. Of comedy. I yeah. thought. <laughs> good old Arnold Schwarzenegger just that little kid just being like boys have penis girls, girls have, have vaginas, vaginas. It's just like well not, let's let's get you up on gender politics here, my man <laughs> we, it's a lot of lot of difference there's so now. many funny one, one liners from the movie it's not a, a tumor yeah it's not a tumor um, are you patty certified I don't know what that means it's um, underwater snork- snorkeling oh. what's that called diving it's no. diving <laughs> okay clearly because I don't know what it is <laughs> uh, have you ever dr- uh, flown a plane no, I don't want to do that. Uh, have you uh, ever won? Wouldn't, I wouldn't say that flying a plane's nerdy. That's pretty badass. I know. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You have to go to school for a long time to do it. Oh, that is true. Your son did just make a, a cockpit. Yeah. In room, so. I know. Would you guys trust me flying your plane? Um, I, I was like 10 minutes late getting here. I could, <laughs> and I've been here a hundred times. I just took my husband to, and I talk about nerdy. I took him to a World War II restaurant last night for oh, his what? birthday. There's. Can I go? Can I wear an outfit? What's happening? It's... It, it, <laughs> 
What World War Two restaurant should. is it? We're like a like a nineteen oh forties. Yeah. Wait, what's then, 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 this World War Two restaurant? It's in Shambly. It's called Fifty Seventh Fighter. Oh, it's I know that's near me. You can see the planes. Yes. Yeah, and I, that's right near my house. Yeah. Oh, so it's at the you airport. can watch the planes taking off and landing, and then everything is themed. They have like dance nights and stuff. Okay, I know about this restaurant. I haven't been there, but I've heard about it because my friends used to take their children there to watch the the planes land. But you took your husband on his birthday. Yes. (laughs) That's nerdy and cute. (laughs) That's really cute. But my husband was saying that he did fly his uncle's plane one time. Cause he, and he was like, you actually have to like pay attention. Like you can't just like, you have to hold it. Like you can't, like on a boat, you know, you can kind of like just chill. And he said that like he kind of was daydreaming and all of a sudden they got a call from the whatever and they're like hey you're below thirty seven thousand feet you okay and he was like oh okay <laughs> so i it's there's a lot- no coasting <laughs> no yeah you but can't put it autopilot i have no desire to fly a plane or ride in a small plane or oh. i'm good i hate i also get very very art uh, they're sick. hot and then you throw up that's my experience <laughs> every time that flight landing to mexico was the worst sickness i've had that's and so wild that that people flight next to was me so were bad. so scared that's so but weird. also it's just it's just me but yeah it was turbulent but Mm. you made it have, okay have you ever won the perfect attendance award no I don't think even i don't think so have you ever been stuffed in a locker no. sexually doesn't count i've been stuffed but not in a locker <laughs> I just, that's why i was just like i thought she was like you've been stuffed hey that's a nerdy thing to do right there that's what like talk about carry on <laughs> okay carry um, in can you swim the butterfly yeah, yeah. not well not well. Okay. Why is that nerdy? Because uh, you have to swim a long time to be able to do the butterfly. Oh. So it's anything that you are passionate about that you go to the next level. Hmm. Uh, okay. Celebrity crush. Oh, my gosh. Oh my How much time we have left? I know you love – you have crushes on everybody. Yeah. I love it. Kate Blanchett, Melanie Linsky. Oh, my God. Um, Amy Adams. I think she's so cute. Oh, gosh. Adam Scott. I just love him so much. Who else do I love? I mean, my old – my – my all time is Leonardo DiCaprio from when I was a kid in Titanic. But now I can't think of any whenever you say them, but it's just like I'm constantly just like in love with somebody week to week. Are you in love with me? Mm-hmm. Aww. Aww. My all time favorite crush, honestly, is Patrick Swayze. He will always I don't care what Aww. sexuality you are. He's a kicking move his he body. He is so mm-hmm. sexy. Well not anymore, but he could. <laughs> he could. <Christ>. <laughs> He's pretty stiff now, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> He lost a lot of his. He's his in the dirt <laughs> dancing. Oh, dirt. Get it, dirty dancing. And he's in yeah. The, I just don't think. I, she, I think they got. I just don't think they wanted to give <laughs> Too you a soon. laugh. Sorry, your crush is, is died. We're, guess what? We're all gonna die. I know you soon probably. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> You're gonna feel really bad if yeah. I really do die soon. Oh, that's all I think about your I'll health. I'll clip this and play it at your funeral. Actually, I'm strong AF because I've almost died and didn't. Yeah, Twice. True. Yeah. You're turning me into a Jewish mother. I'm just worrying about you <laughs> all the time. The Clemson. I know tummy. you're like, how's your health? <laughs> yes. That was the first thing you asked me. Every time, how is your health? <laughs> Eat this matzo ball soup. <laughs> Where's your hat? Where are your hats? Um, oh. Okay, I, this is, I had to bring this over. This is a new lo- list of of nerdy questions because a man, a AJ Dobbs won the all time nerd of the year with my last uh, group of questions, Aww. so I had to do all new ones now. But the one we brought over from last time is: Do you have a cape? Oh yeah. <laughs> do you wear it when you go rollerblading? No, <laughs> I just dress up a lot. People like uh, Amanda Chandler. All I mean. <laughs> Amber Chandler also likes to dress up and we do like she has like roasts and stuff. And so she'll message me like, do you have a wig? Do you have a cape? And usually and I can vice versa. We both like to dress up. So, yeah, I have a cape. I don't have a cape. And I'm really actually upset right now that I don't own a cape. I feel like I should own a cape. Wedding maybe you guys present. should get me. I know. I was literally bit like, maybe you guys need to get me like a, a bedazzled wedding cape. Hers Ooh. and hers matching. Hers and hers I'm capes. Sure would love a <laughs> bedazzled wedding cape. Brittany's has to be pink. Of course. I In my mind, it was pink. Mm-hmm. Do you want a white one like Elvis? Yeah, I want a white one with like glitter. Okay, and rhinestones? My mom, sidebar, her biggest fear on my wedding day is that I'm going to look like Elvis. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Elvis is awesome. Who cares if I look like Elvis? Which Elvis? The 70s I'm ones. like the fat Elvis or the, <laughs> the young, sexy Elvis. She just doesn't want... Are you doing a white onesie? 
I'm doing like a white outfit. And you know what? If I look like Elvis, I'm going to think that's look pretty badass. Yeah. Elvis is pretty cool. Just make sure you have the sunglasses so you can take some yeah. glasses. Some I don't want to like have the heart attack, but I'll get the I'll sunglasses. rock out to some Elvis. I think you'll look great. It's got to be a little tricky when you're doing um, a woman marrying a woman. I, I, what to wear? Like who? Like who? As a, as your gender like identity like yeah do you feel more comfortable in suits do you both wear like pretty dresses like I'm gonna be naked and just have a cape <laughs> I love it all right that was nerdy for this episode about women in comedy thank you guys for coming I love you so much and you're not gonna die you're gonna take care of yourself I am absolutely not gonna die anytime soon and I love you and knock this was so wood. fun everyone not gonna thank wood. you all right thank you so much thanks Amy. Burr, 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 burr.